So you've mastered the art of stealing from clans. You've honed your skills with the AK. You're ready to show the world your hardcore solo skills. This swipe, you're gonna dominate the server all on your own. And you need a base that can make that happen. What you need is the Outcast. The Outcast is a no holds barred, all out fortress for the hardcore solo player. Featuring four embrasured gatehouses, inner and outer peak downs, a dedicated bedroom, and four external TCs, this well-protected expansion on the 2x1 concept takes the simplest design in Rust and turns it into a formidable stronghold capable of defending against even the most serious online raid. In its final form, the base's upkeep costs are not for the faint of heart. These numbers represent the base in its absolute endgame state, where armored doors are abundant and you've upgraded your shell to sheet metal. Prior to making these expensive upgrades, you can expect the base to cost significantly less than the numbers on screen. A brute force side-in raid of this base will prove to be incredibly expensive, and you can forget about getting grief during an online raid as the raiders would have to spend 32 additional rockets just to destroy the external TCs. Let's take a tour of the base. First, we're greeted by one of our gatehouses. With embrasures on both sides and an industrial door in the center, we get almost 360 degree vision coverage both outside and inside the compound. This will assist against door campers and fighting against online raiders. Heading inside the compound, we have four cleanly placed auto turrets that give 100% coverage of the area. Only two are necessary to cover the majority of the compound, so having four just makes it that much harder for raiders to break through. Because of this base's specific footprint, the compound only needs 12 walls in total and they always place airtight, so you never have to worry about your turrets being shot out through a gap in the walls. Entering into the shell of the base, we can see that again we have 100% auto turret coverage of the entire ring. Additionally, the ring is sectioned off on both ends by multiple doors so that you can control which portions are accessible should they become compromised. Two separated ladder hatch chutes lead up to the third floor, offering protected visibility of the ring on your way up. Since this is the only way into the core from the ground, door raiding the space becomes a nightmare, even early on in the wipe. Arriving on the third floor, again we notice an incredible amount of auto turret coverage that will slow down even the biggest raiding parties from getting control of your peak downs. Straight ahead, your bed and power room, one of many sectioned off spawn points in the base that will allow you to quickly gear up and stay in the fight. Simple peak downs remain stable even if the shell begins to crumble and if raiders pummel to the core, sneakier angles become available as the walls break away. Moving out towards one of the roof ramps, we have depot boxes for heli runs and more lockers in case your bedroom gets compromised. In case you haven't kept your eyes on the ceiling, each area in this space, including this one, is separated with plenty of garage doors. Jumping out onto the roof, we have a mini hangar, two high coverage auto turrets, and a variety of windows and ramps to change your height and position while you fend off the enemy. Built off of our external TCs, we have these state-of-the-art tile gap peaks that allow for great visibility over the compound and even safer anti-air engagements. If two turrets by the peak downs weren't enough, two more cover the entire roof from the top of the ramps. These can be left open to protect against offline raiders or closed off so they're protected until you open them at just the right moment. Heading into the core, this door path leads symmetrically from one side of the base to the other so you never run out of options to regain control. Down to the second layer of the core, we have two highly fortified window loot rooms and space for furnaces and an auto turret. Descending into the heart of the base, we pass by our tier 3 workbench, one more locker, and an optional auto turret. The core of the base makes fantastic use of the 2x1 solo design by fitting your bed right in the center and surrounding it with storage, including two vending machines that make it significantly more expensive to raid into the TC or out of the TC. Since this base is protected by four externals, even if raiders take the fastest path to the main TC, they still have to spend an additional 14 rockets to destroy the windows and vending machines and enter your main loot room. That's enough looking around, let's get into the build. As with any design that uses an outer shell and external TCs, you'll want to choose a relatively flat area. Verify that the basic footprint will fit in your desired location. Start with a standard honeycomb 2x1 and then fill out a second layer of honeycombing in the footprint. Extend these two ends with three triangles each. When you're done, the footprint should look like this. Then cut it back down. The starter unit consists of a single square and a single triangle. 
Place the TC in the center of the triangle, as close to the square as possible without blocking you from placing a window frame there later. Then slap down a double door. Use this space for early game deployables, but don't keep it for long. It has no airlock and leaves you vulnerable to someone going deep. In order to get a usable airlock, add a second square behind the first one and wall it off. Use your furnace as a temporary jump up. Wall in the second floor on the same tile, making sure to add a half wall shelf before placing the last wall. In order to get in and out of the base during this time, you'll need to come down to the outside and place this twig jump up. Don't worry, it's only a temporary measure. Replace it with a ladder when you get the chance. Now you have an airlock that will prevent you from losing your base to door campers should they manage to kill you with one door open. As soon as you learn the garage door blueprint, you can proceed with the next stage of the build. Come to the side of the back tile and place a half floor build up. Then enter the core and utilize the build up to place this half shelf. Remove the double door and place down your tier 2 workbench. Craft up your garage doors and replace them wherever possible. This will make your final jump up for the core. Come back down outside and remove the twig build up. At this point, we're likely to be running out of box space, so let's build our first loot room. This is how we started off. Place each of the following items in the exact same order I do, and take your time. They have to be precise. Be sure to place the large boxes flush against the corner and have the barbecue opening away from the first box. Then place another large box in the opposite corner. Follow it up with a barbecue opening towards you on each side and place a small box beneath them. It's important that you already have your first garage door deployed before these barbecues go down because otherwise you'll have to pick everything up to place it. Two more small boxes can be placed like so. Before we can expand the second floor, we need to add the honeycombing. Place down a standard layer of 2x1 honeycombing, but make sure that the inner two walls are sheet metal. This is important because we will not have access to them anymore when the honeycombing is complete. The sheet metal honeycombing should look like this on the inside. Repeat the same process on the other side of the base. With our honeycombing complete, we're free to add the second floor to our core. Wrap your way around with walls as shown. Seal it all off and then add these half shelves. Later, we'll upgrade everything in these loot rooms to sheet metal. This is important because these half shelf loot rooms act as honeycombing. They block players from moving through them without first destroying them. For now though, they could be left stone. At this point, you should upgrade your TC compartment to sheet metal. I like to add my externals after this as well, but the exact order of operations is up to you and how you progress. For the purpose of this video, we'll work on the externals right now. Follow around the perimeter of your base with twig, like so. We're not going to upgrade it yet, but it'll help you visualize the next steps. Place a square tile at each long end of the base. When you're done, the footprint should look like this. We're using two separate external TC designs in this build, so make sure you pay attention to which one goes where. We'll start with the long ends. Build outwards six square foundations and one triangle foundation. Then come back and change the first square to a triangle. Now cap it off with your TC. Repeat the same process on the opposite end. Remember, build out six square foundations and one triangle foundation. Then come back and change the first square to a triangle. Now add the TC. For the remaining two externals, we're using a more advanced technique. 
This is because the innermost foundation of these externals will hold up our rooftop peak downs. Build out three half moons and then cap it off with a square foundation and a triangle foundation. Then remove the half moons. Build back in with squares, but leave the last space for a triangle. Then add your TC. Like we did with the first two TCs, repeat the same process on the opposite end. Build out with three half moons. Cap it off with a square and a triangle foundation, then remove the half moons. Now build back in with square foundations, but leave the last space for a triangle. And then add your TC. It should look like this when you're done. From now on in the video, I'll be building the base at its final level of material upgrades. I'll leave it up to you to decide when to upgrade things to sheet metal or HQM in game. The only important upgrades to keep in mind here are these loot rooms, which need to be upgraded before you seal them off, and the tool cupboard room, which must be upgraded to HQM before you place the window and vending machines in front of it later. As I just mentioned, these two loot rooms must be upgraded before being sealed, and ideally the boxes should already be deployed inside. Other deployables such as furnaces, shotgun traps, and drop boxes can be placed at your discretion. I will however be showing you each of the auto turret placements near the end of the video. With the core of the base fleshed out, it's time to build our compound. Start on the long side of the base and build out from the first square foundation of the external TC. Keep the soft sides of each window frame facing your base and build the gatehouse as shown. Later on, you should place glass windows on the inside window frames to prevent grubs from shooting out your auto turrets through the embrasures. Make sure to use industrial single doors if you have them. Use twig triangles to help in placing these three metal barricades. Place the ones on the side as far out as possible. Now repeat the same process on the other side. Make your way to the short side of the base and come to the second square foundation. Place three window frames and a wall frame. Use embrasures on the side and a window on the front. Fill the wall frame with a double door. Then place a metal barricade on top. Here's the process one more time on the other side. If you follow the build steps carefully thus far, your gatehouses should be positioned perfectly for an airtight compound. Watch how I align the walls. The goal is to press the edge of the stone wall directly against the side of the gatehouse, with the opposite side facing the next gatehouse. When placing the second wall, try to place it halfway between the embrasure so a little bit can be peaked on each side. The third wall should fit in the center naturally. Although this design makes the compound as cheap and as easy as possible, I still recommend you practice this step in a build server as any gap in your compound will undermine the strength of your auto turrets by allowing people to easily shoot them out when you're offline. Repeat the same process three more times. This is what it should look like when it's done. Before we move on to the shell and upper floors, let's secure our main loot room by adding the final upgrades. Remove these four unnecessary twig foundations. Place an armored window frame here, but don't put anything inside it yet. Place two vending machines flush against the window frame and leave a gap between them. This requires some precision, but nothing pixel perfect. Still, it's mandatory that you practice this in a build server because if you mess it up, it's extremely difficult to fix. Now you can add an armored window and an embrasure into the window frame. Remember to repair them after pulling them off and replacing them. 
Stand at the edge of the jump up and place your first bed as close to you as possible. This will leave space for two additional small boxes. Drop boxes can be placed on the sides of the core as well, but try to place them as low and away from the vending machines as possible to leave room for shotgun traps above. With the core fleshed out, let's move on to the shell. First, come outside and add honeycombing here. Then add your ladder hatch chutes on either side. The window frames should face inside the ring and the walls should face out. Heading up the chutes, construct this half shelf jump up from your second floor to the third. Add one more on top of it. If you're having trouble placing the walls, place a twig triangle underneath first and destroy it after. You can get rid of this twig now. You won't be needing it anymore. Upgrade your defense ring to the desired grade. To build the entrance to our ring, Place five wall frames along the triangles leading into it, and two window frames to the sides of the entrance. If your outer ring is sheet metal, ensure you have windows and embrasures on the inside so raiders don't get a cheaper path through. Repeat an identical entrance on the other side. Fill out the ring with walls, but leave the entrance alone. Head up top to honeycomb the second floor above the entrances. Now you can build the inner peak downs. Start with three triangles from the sides and a square on either end of them. Fill out the remaining triangle on the jump up side. Ensure that you at least upgrade the three triangles to sheet metal before you place an auto turret on them so it isn't as easily destroyed in a raid. Cover the gaps with siren lights. And this is what it should look like when it's done. Now we can begin our bedroom floor and our shooting floor. Wrap your way around the third floor with walls, leaving a gap on each long end. Place a square tile off of each gap and then build an Evil Worst style roof ramp as shown. Repeat on the other side. Place these three wall frames to provide stability for building the roof. From here, fill out every tile of the roof. Make sure you seal off the floor for now with garage doors on both ramps. Now that the third floor is fully secured, you can fill it out at your discretion. First, I'll add the multi-directional door path on each side. A locker and sleeping bag fit nicely in the middle. Add these drop boxes whenever you'd like.
Next, we can build a bed and battery room. Come around to the opposite side of this metal wall and close yourself in at each triangle beside it. I'm going to seal the batteries in with garage doors here, but theoretically you could use armored windows instead. You'll just have to find a more creative way to place your branches and other electrical devices. Now we'll build our roof airlocks. Place an embrasured window on one side for visibility of the ramp and a door path on the other side. Depot boxes go like so and an optional locker spawn point can fit against the wall. Guard the ramp with the shotgun trap. Repeat the process on the other side. Finally, section off the inner peaks and bedroom by placing two garage doors here. The last phase of the build is the peak downs and battlements. Start by coming down to the long side external TC triangle foundation and building up with wall frames. This will allow you to place your peak downs. Repeat on the other side. Come up to the roof and place window frames around the perimeter, using wall frames instead at the peak downs. A double door opening outwards completes each peak down section, and every window frame receives a vertical metal embrasure. Place a staircase leading off of each square floor tile into your embrasures. Finish the roof off with your minicopter hanger. For your power sources, solar panels work fine until you need a lot of power. Then you should switch to windmills, building towers off of each roof ramp. Ensure that you strengthen your roof ramp access with wall frames as shown before you get pummeled by rockets. This will keep your roof access available even if raiders attack from the door side. Make sure to do it on both sides. The last important structural upgrade is to beef up your external TCs once you have single armored doors. You could also use garage doors here, but you'll be protecting against six rockets instead of eight until you can afford double armored doors, which are even more expensive. Add a stone compartment in front of the TC and seal it with a single armored door, then replace the glass window with an armored one. Repeat on all TCs as the materials become available. This concludes the basic construction of the base. Finally, I'll show you all the best auto turret locations in the order that I believe they should be placed for solo progression. The first and most urgent auto turrets for a solo are the compound turrets. You don't have time to waste guarding your large furnaces from grubs. You should be out progressing. To this end, place these two turrets first so that you can run your furnaces while you're out of the base. Ensure that the door path is not obstructed and keep the offset on the same side so coverage remains optimal. Next up are the roof turrets. The easiest way for mid-game raiders to take you out is by landing a scrap heli on your roof and drilling down. Prevent this by placing the two roof ramp turrets as shown. Use a large box if you want to be more precise. Moving on to the inside of the base, cover your entire inner defense ring with these two turrets. 
Back into the compound, I like to place an additional two turrets next using the same offset to keep the doorway unobstructed. Doubling up on compound turrets early makes a ground raid extremely difficult, as even if your entire core is open, raiders can't loot anything without first destroying every turret covering the breach. Back to the peak downs, place a turret on each side to cover the entire area including the roof ramps when opened. Finally, double up your turret count on the roof by placing these two. Make sure they don't block traversal of the peak downs and that they are fully shielded from outside fire when the doors are closed. As with most base builds, this is only a platform for you to expand upon or modify to your liking. There are many additional upgrades you can make if you become richer, and many steps you can skip or deployables you can forgo if you aren't doing as well. It's all up to you and your playstyle. This is my first ever base building tutorial, so I'd be grateful for any feedback you have for me. Please consider subscribing and I will do my absolute best to provide you more solo content and improve on its quality as I go. This design forgoes many complexities and design choices for specific reasons. As a solo, it's tremendously important that your base design is easy to build and navigate because you don't have time to waste on complex footprints, bunkers, or exploits such as roof and wall stacking. Every precious minute in your wipe needs to be spent progressing if you want to keep up with the big boys. I also kept every main pathway in the base as unobstructed as possible because I highly value ease of travel throughout my base. Every second spent moving through your base during a raid could make the difference between winning or losing, so that's why I've chosen not to fill all my hallways with boxes and things of that nature. All that being said, I'm no professional. I don't have 10k solo hours, I don't have 10k build hours, I'm not Vice, I'm not alone in Tokyo, if you have suggestions on how I could have done better with the build, please don't hesitate to share them with me. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you again soon.